Here with me today, I have the WIO RP2040 module and the corresponding dev board from Seed Studio. This board was launched towards the end of May this year, so it has a few months out in the world, but it hasn't really gathered that much attention. Perhaps that's for a reason, but we will look into that in a minute. This board is interesting as it adds Wi-Fi functionality to the RP2040 chip. So welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems RP2040 microcontroller review. We try and review new and interesting RP2040 boards that come out. So if you are interested in them, then please make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date. Let's talk about price of this board. The WIO RP2040 module comes in at $6.95 and is available directly from the Seed Studio website. And I believe they ship from China. So do take that into, a, into account if you're going to buy from them directly. I have seen these parts pop up on DigiKey and similar retailers such as Mauser at about a dollar or so premium over Seed's MSRP. The dev board version comes in at $12.95. And the dev board basically breaks out the module so it doesn't add too much functionality but makes things a bit easier to prototype or develop with your projects. In terms of dimensions, the module itself comes in at 18 by 28.2 millimeters and the dev board comes in at 25.8 by 45.5 millimeters. The WIO RP2040 module is powered by the RP2040 chip. The RP2040 chip was designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation and we have featured this chip pretty heavily on this channel. But for those new or unfamiliar, let's go over its key specs. The RP2040 is a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor running stock at 133 MHz. It has 264 kilobytes of SRAM and two SPI, I2C and UART controllers. It also has four analog to digital inputs. Um, those four inputs are muxed into one analog to digital converter. So basically a single converter switches between different inputs as and when you want to read them. It has eight PIO state machines, USB 1.1 host and device support, and 16 PWM channels. So the module itself has two megabytes of onboard flash memory, and that's okay for this price point, but I would have liked to see another skew of the board, possibly with eight or 16 megs, um, because this might, well, because two megabytes might not be enough for some people with more complex projects, especially projects that incorporate Wi-Fi. And on the subject of Wi-Fi, this board is equipped with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi capabilities. According to Seed, this supports both access point and station mode and supports B, G, and N Wi-Fi. Station mode is essentially just a device connected to a network, like uh, the WIO RP2040 connecting to your wireless router, for example, whereas access point mode means that devices could connect to a wireless access point that the, RP20, that the WIO RP2040 has set up. So you say your phone could connect to the WIO RP2040 in this mode. The Wi-Fi functionality of this board is probably the main standout feature of this module for most people. And there is no Bluetooth support on board. That is pretty much the only functionality of the module, but the dev board does increase the amount of features available um, to you by adding two buttons, a boot select button and a run button. The run button is just a reset button. I'm not sure why they've labeled it a run button, but there are also two LEDs, a power indicator LED, and a user programmable LED tied to GPIO pin 13. And we also have a USB-C connector. In terms of GPIO, the WIO RP2040 module has 32 castellated pins that are spaced one mil apart. And the dev board has 28 pins, including a V-in power pin, which can power the board with input voltages between 3.6 volts and five volts and a 3.3 volts output power pin for powering your devices, so any breakout boards you might have. There are four analog input capable pins and the rest of the pins are sort of multifunctional GPIO pins. The physical pins on the board are castellated 
and the dev board is single sided so you can actually solder this board onto another PCB which might end up being a bit funny to be honest having the the original module soldered to the dev board which is then in turn soldered to your own PCB and if you were going to do something like that well there doesn't seem to be much point just solder the, the module onto your PCB and add some of the power circuitry that you might require and don't use the dev board so miss out that middleman. The pins are labelled on the back of the dev board, which is a bit of a pain as you can't easily tell which pins are which when you inevitably put this in a, break, in a breadboard to prototype your projects. I think that pretty much covers the main features of this board and I'm going to go into some of my thoughts about this board. I want to preface this and make it clear that I come from a C programming background and I use C for pretty much all of my projects. I don't use MicroPython or CircuitPython at all, although I know that some of you watching might do so the following comments I make might not be as important to you, just to keep that in mind. The first and main problem I have with this board is the documentation, or lack thereof. I could not find an official datasheet or schematic at all. There is no official mention of what device or coprocessor is powering the Wi-Fi functionality of this module. So I actually had to look into the FCC filings for the module and take a look at the images without the RF shield on to find out that it is using an ESP8285. I should note that since writing this, there does appear to now be a mention of the ESP8285 in the marketing blurb, just not the official specification list. But now that I know the, what chip is being used, I now have no idea of how it's actually wired up to the RP2040 chip or the firmware that is on the ESP8285. Now, Yes, it's feasible I could sit down, spend some time and work it out, you know, have a look at, maybe take the shield off, inspect what traces are going in, try and find out what pins have been broken out, what pins are connected to what. But I don't see the point of that on a product that you buy and not one that you're trying to make yourself or reverse engineer. Some users have speculated, and I think this is correct, uh, as it sounds about right to me, that the ESP8285 is interfaced with the RP2040 over SPI and controlled using AT commands. Seed provides a customized MicroPython interpreter which uses libraries to help with interfacing with the network controller, or sorry, the Wi-Fi chip, but there is no clear source to this, so you can't exactly peek under the hood and see what's going on. There are, however, a couple of interesting MicroPython examples using this board, which do seem be, to be fairly clear and easy to follow. But in terms of C programming, well, there's nothing at all. No libraries or anything. To be clear, some documentation could at least set people going in the right path to working it out themselves. And this could be sort of the interface, whether you're SPI or UART. Seed have provided an example Arduino project to use the Wi-Fi functionality on the Wio RP2040 within the Arduino IDE, but it doesn't work. And by their own admission, they have published it, but haven't updated it to actually work with this board um, as it uses UART instead of SPI. And that's, I think, led to a bit of confusion with people using SPI or not using SPI, trying to use UART and not working. So the documentation is clearly lagging behind the project. Uh, the the product. Um, so I, I, don't, I really don't want to bash on it any more than, than I have. Uh, the board itself I think is quite promising and all of the problems I have with this board would be fixed. Well, sorry, most of the problems I, would, I have with this board would be fixed with a little documentation. I think there could be a little, more, little bit more flash memory on board, but you know, I think for the size, the price, it's not too bad. I hope you found this interesting. Let us know what you think of the Wio RP2040 down in the comments below and be sure to let us know if you disagree with anything we have said here today. We love to hear and read your inputs on these boards. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing for more. Thank you and as always, have a nice day.